Welcome into BLTV Channel 6. I'm Brian Kell. We've reached out to many candidates throughout our service area that have some contested races going on, and this particular candidate interview is no exception. Sitting here with us here at the BLTV Channel 6 studio is House of Representative for the 43rd District, uh, Mr. Paul Sherrill. Mr. Sherrill, thank you so much for joining us here on BLTV Channel 6. Thank you, Brian, and thank you to the folks out there that'll be listening on uh, TV or folks, social media or ever have. We yeah. just want to appreciate the opportunity today. Well, we, we appreciate you dropping by with us. Uh, tell us about you. Okay, I, I am State Representative Paul Sherrill. I represent the uh, 43rd District, which is, uh, of course, redistricting took place. It's all of Warren County and all of White County now. Uh, I am a Republican candidate for the 43rd District in the Warren and White County area. Uh, married to my wife, Miranda. Uh, we have two children, uh, Marley, our daughter, and, and our son, Lee Sherrill. Um, I am a conservative, a uh, Christian, uh, a little bit of background, a former police officer. Uh, we've had a small business and things like this in, in time, so. Yeah, good deal. Um, what are your constituents, people making up Warren and White County, what are they telling you are the big issues uh, that they are facing or they're concerned with most? Well, probably the biggest issue that we are hearing today is uh, the person that is sitting in the seat in Washington, D.C. is president. And, and his uh, cronies that, that he has up there uh, in his cabinet, uh, what they're doing to the United States here today since uh, they have took over the White House and up there is terrible to us in the United States. Uh, we have seen uh, when he first took over uh, executive order, uh, the pipeline was shut down that was going to help us with our fuel problems, which evidently we didn't have a fuel problem, but it was going to help us hopefully in the future of bringing this fuel down from Canada. And the executive order shut it down and we have seen our fuel prices double. Well, as we see our fuel prices double, uh, Everything else is going up. I mean, you go wherever you go, grocery store, you go to the co-op, or you go to get you some clothes, or whatever you go to do, uh, everything seems to nearly double. So uh, that's probably the biggest issue that we're seeing probably uh, that I'm hearing from people locally. Um, Governor Lee has come out in favor of charter schools in Tennessee. Now, now whether they are in a county that, that you represent or not, are you in favor of charter schools in Tennessee? Well, the charter schools right now are not in Warren County or White County at this time. And we want to very much say today, fully, we are fully in support of our uh, public education. I graduated from uh, White County High School in 1977. Uh, my wife and daughter both graduated from a Christian school where we used to live at. Uh, our son, he just graduated, uh, Lee did, from the uh, White County High School this year. Uh, we have good school systems in Warren County and White County. So, Charter schools, to my understanding, we have charter schools in Nashville. We have some in Memphis. We have some in Knoxville, two in Chattanooga. Uh, so for in order a charter school to even come about, say, the Board of Education and the Superintendent of School, this organization of charter schools has to apply for uh, their type schooling, the charter school. So they have to come and apply for it. So it's up to the superintendent school and the uh, Board of Education if they want to allow a charter school in White County and Warren County. <clears throat> Miracle, uh, excuse me, Miracle Medical uh, Marijuana uh, continues to bubble up to the surface, uh, you know, in talks uh, throughout the state. Where do you stand on this subject of medical marijuana? Well, to my understanding of what I serve on the education, I mean, serve on the uh, health committee. So, uh, to my understanding about marijuana, uh, it's a problem. There's no scientific evidence, to my understanding, that marijuana either heals or does it cure anything. Now, it may be somewhere, but I don't know of it. I haven't heard anything that it does any of that. So, you know. Being a past police officer, 
uh, what I've seen of marijuana, if you want to say medical marijuana, whatever it is, it's a problem to our law enforcement officers. You take a dog out here that does searches of cars, uh, that dog don't know if it's this kind of marijuana or if it's him or if it's medical marijuana or whatever. It's a problem to our law enforcement officers. Plus, it's, it's a problem to our, uh, to our people. It's a problem to our children. To me, it's a problem in society. Now, is there something good for it? It may be somewhere. I just mm -hmm. don't know what it is. Gotcha. Um, should abortion, and of course this topic's been talked about quite a bit <laughs> over, over the last year or so, and you could even say decades, uh, should abortion have no exceptions or should it have exceptions uh, such as the life of the mother being in danger mm -hmm. or incest? Kind of talk about that topic and where you feel there may be, be restrictions or no restrictions. Well, first of all, abortion is wrong, period. I mean, it's just wrong. Uh, there is, uh, you want to say, doctors that's out there that are heartless, or you want to say a heartless doctor that performs abortions on ladies, takes the life of that child inside that mother. Serving on the health committee, hearing what some of these heartless doctors do to them little bodies that comes out of that woman, tearing it apart, abortion is wrong. You know, a, a good doctor, to my understanding, um, he takes an oath to save a life, not take a life, to my understanding. But there is times that we as people like you and I, we can't see what's going on inside of that mother that's pregnant with a child. So we, and I, I believe this is a fair thing, to, we got to protect our doctors. We got to support our doctors. We got to have our doctors. So I think there is times that a doctor can see it's best, uh, depending on how that lady, she might be pregnant, something might be something in the tube or something that she's pregnant. We've got to, we got to trust our doctors that that doctor will do the best for that lady and for that child that's inside of that mother. Mm -hmm. So, um, speak kind of staying in the medical side of things, uh, transgender surgeries on minors have become a subject um, across the, the mid state and maybe even the state uh, with over the past couple of months. Um, uh, due to uh, uh, it, it, surgeries being performed or having been performed at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Where do you stand on this subject? <laughs> what a major problem. Transistor surgeries on minors and adults, it's wrong. It's just wrong. And I'm going to say this, and I know some might not agree with me, but according to the Bible, in Genesis 1 and verses 27, it says, God made us male and female. And God does not make mistakes. Period. No. Our preacher says, if you don't know what you are, he says, go in the bathroom and take your clothes off and stand in front of the mirror. And I believe you can, if you've got some common sense about you, if you're in your right mind, you can figure out whether you're a male or a female. As some of these old plumbers says, some says you'll either have male plumbing or you'll have female plumbing. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. So, yeah. Oh, so um, it's wrong. Okay. You know, uh, and, and I just want to say this about this too, that, you know, Vanderbilt uh, is doing this. They've done, my understanding, they have done about five surgeries per year mm. on these uh, young people with parents' consent, okay? So as legislators in the Tennessee House of Republicans, we have... Uh, Representative Zachary and, and with us, I believe there's 60-something signatures that we sent to Vanderbilt, asked in Vanderbilt to do, to do not do these. Mm -hmm. And they have ceased to doing it. Uh, they sent a letter back to us and they said they would stop doing it. So I feel like that probably uh, as we go back to Nashville, I hope to be reelected in November, uh, we'll go back in Nashville next year and hopefully try to do something to, to help the situation out. Uh, it's a major problem. And Vanderbilt's a great hospital. They've done great things with different people, uh, children things, but this is just, it's wrong. Uh, but. Um, 
what have you done or will you do uh, with members of the opposing party uh, if elected? In other words, working together across the aisles, if you will. Okay. Uh, I'll just use this, for example, uh, back in 19, um, excuse me, back in 2021, uh, and this comes from both sides. Uh, we have an issue, or did have an issue, and hopefully we're trying to work this issue out. TWRA uh, across the state of Tennessee has done some things where they, and first what we learned about it was up in towards Scotts Guff, up in the Brigstone area up there. They was coming in, TWRA was clear-cutting timber up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, lots of yeah. acres, mm -hmm. and you probably have heard this. Mm -hmm. Well, the hunters do not want this. Now, the people that want the quail habitat, yes, they want that, but the, actually the, most of the hunters don't want it. So they was clear-cutting all this property, and see, this, this land belongs to the state of Tennessee, which belongs to you and I as taxpayers and ever who's listening. Mm -hmm. And... So they was putting this money that they was getting off this clear cutting into their pocket, TWRA, instead of putting it back into the pocket of the taxpayers of the state of Tennessee. So we had, um, I sent out a letter, and we had 34 signatures uh, that was asking them not to do this, and 10 of them was Democrats that was actually supportive of the letter that, that I sent out, asking that they not do this, and they have stopped it at the present. Now, we've still got more issues with TWRA, and I hope as time goes along that we'll try to work these issues out because we've got to protect the people of the state of Tennessee. Yeah. Um, are, are there any other issues? You've talked about a lot here. Uh, are there any other issues that you feel passionate about in bringing some change to over the next four years or over the next two? Well, there's a lot of issues, I guess you would say, across the state of Tennessee that you could you know, talk about. And uh, one, one issue that has been brought to my mind, uh, uh, we've talked about it. I met with some of the veterans. I uh, didn't realize we had such a problem with it. But we have veterans that has went and served our country. And they have um, come back and we're having problems with someone committing suicide. So we need to, from the state side, we need to try to work on trying to help these folks that is went and fought for us. We need to try to help them uh, something with the suicide rate. And then we, I know we have the problem of homeless people. Uh, and you know, I know it's been talked about here in Warren County and I think that maybe, is it Bill Davis or somebody that here locally, maybe they're building some little houses, try to help some of the gotcha, yeah. homeless mm -hmm. people, which is great. And, and it may be something like that we need to do across the state of Tennessee, mm -hmm. you know, to, something for them to get in that will be decent for them to live in. So we need to try to take care of our homeless. Um, and also speaking with some of these uh, uh, people that works for uh, Department of Children's Services, uh, I didn't realize that we had such of a big issue with some of these children. Uh, maybe they do something wrong. They come into an office wherever Department of Children's Services is, mm -hmm. and they don't have nowhere to go. So they may throw out a quilt, they may throw out a mattress. I've seen pictures of it. They throw out something out there for them to sleep on of a night. And it's a major problem. Mm -hmm. That is something that we need to address uh, in the state of Tennessee. You know, uh, back in Haslam's time, my understanding, we had Taft Youth Center. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of underage students or children, whatever you want to say, was over there, incarcerated, whatever. Okay, that building is sitting over there empty. Nothing being done with it except running down. And that's not the only place here close by. Up in East Tennessee and other places, we need to think about utilizing some of them places to try to help some of these uh, people that's maybe committed some kind of offense to try to help them and help the Department of Children Services. So that's some issues, and I know there's a lot of other things. That's just two or three, you know, would just come to mind with the time we have today. I want to thank you for your time being here. We've got about 30 seconds. If you'd like to address the, the person out there that's watching right now as to why you're the best candidate for this position, go right ahead. Again, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you, Ben Loman. Uh, I first believe in my heart this is what God wants me to do in my time of life. Uh, I've been elected um, 2016, 2018, 2020, and here we are in 2022 as we're trying to get reelected in Warren and White County in the 43rd District. Uh, I just want you to know if you have an issue, please reach out to the office in Nashville. 
Uh, Sherry, my assistant, has retired. I have a new assistant, Becky Cantrell. Uh, the number down there is 615-741-1963. Our, our home number is 931-935-8488, and we'll try our best to try to help you with whatever need might be. Uh, and I thank you again. Thank you, Warren County, and August 4th. Thank you very much, and, and some of White County for helping me to get through the August 4th election. Thank you. Representative Sherrill, thanks so much. Uh, we appreciate your time here. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, seeking re-election to the 43rd District uh, Tennessee House of Representatives. We appreciate you watching here on BLTV Channel 6.